after I get scissors. <laughs> here with me today. Today we are going to be cleaning up my plant room. Where I am in Florida, it is pretty toasty right now, so it's definitely past winter, unfortunately, uh, and it is time for some spring cleaning. It's time to get this room looking nice. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I am kind of a messy plant parent, so there is soil on almost every surface in this room that definitely needs to be cleaned up. Uh, this room is also, you know, library, so I have kind of dusty books and, you know, it just could use a refresh. I don't know about you guys, but when, you know, my room doesn't change and it, you know, is not the cleanest, I sometimes stop having as much interest in spending time in that space. Uh, with my plants specifically, I tend to not move them around a lot. They stay where they are and I don't really move them unless there's a reason to which can kind of make a room feel stagnant. So I want to refresh this space, refresh this room, get it all nice and clean for spring. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Hope you enjoy. So to get started, I wanted to go ahead and remove all of the existing plants from the areas that I was planning on redoing. Uh, in order to do that, you know, I was just kind of picking things up and putting them wherever they fit around the room. I did kind of have everything a little bit more spread out uh, just because of the recent thrips outbreak. I wanted to make sure that I gave everyone their space. Now that I am actively treating and uh, have a few methods in place to prevent the thrips from returning, I am a little bit more comfortable just placing things where I would like them. Next I decided to go ahead and clean up the shelves. I did have a little bit of soil on some of the shelves, but I'm not particularly worried about it. I do have a robot vacuum. Her name is Eve. Uh, she comes through and she cleans once a day. And as you'll see later in this video, I did end up deep vacuuming uh, and taking, you know, our large vacuum and just vacuuming up any mess that might have gotten a little too close for the vacuum that goes daily to catch. I really wanted to focus on reorganizing these plants. I haven't had most of them move around in at least a few months, and I kind of had a vision that I was working off of, and I think it turned out really well, but you guys will have to wait around and see until the end of the video. Some of my larger plants are a little bit more tricky to move. They are quite heavy. <laughs> this one in particular is a big girl. She is my big Monstera Deliciosa. Nope, Monstera Deliciosa. <laughs> there we go. And she's in a really pretty ceramic pot, but it does not make her one of my lighter plants. And I wanted to put her there. The window that she's up against uh, that you see in this video, she's actually going to be in a south-facing window now. A lot of people grow Monstera in lower light situations, and while they can do okay in those situations, it's not really the best for them. Uh, so I do have her experimentally in this south-facing window with a little bit of filtered light just to see how she does, to see if she you know, puts out some more fenestrated leaves for me. Right now they're mostly single fenestrated leaves. I would like some that get more double fenestrations, uh, just as an indicator that she is happy. Also because the, the leaves themselves look really beautiful and I would really love to have more of them. We did have to tie up that one leaf, but other than that, I think she's going to do well there, and I don't think she's taking up too much space. 
also same deal here. These plants have all been spread out for a few weeks uh, to try to reduce the risk of thrips spreading between my collection plants. And I currently have, and I'll be putting up probably a reel about it soon, um, some beneficial mites that I did get to try to reduce uh, any risk of pest spreading. I am also using systemics in my plants now uh, and probably for the foreseeable future to again reduce that risk of pest infestation. So I'm a little bit more comfortable moving things around now. This area has not really changed much since I want to say October? November, um, I used to have my chlorophytum fireflash over here, and she did okay, uh, but she's actually out in my greenhouse right now. She just wasn't particularly happy, uh, and I think I saw, or you guys might have seen one of my more recent videos, me repotting her to see if maybe we could get uh, her back to health and big, beautiful, bushy status. But a lot of these plants have mostly been, again, in the same spots. This one I'm so excited about. Finally put out a new leaf. I was showing it off there. I've had her for several, several months. And there has been no progress on her growth. So I'm so happy to see that. And this is where I decided to put my fiddle leaf fig. I thought she might make a nice background plant for my videos. And additionally... I think she really likes this self-facing window. I know fiddles like quite a lot of light, but she just put out three new leaves for me at once, actually. So I wanted to keep her in the south window, even though I wanted to move the monster as well. So I just popped her over here from the opposite side. I'm a little out of breath, as you can see there, from moving that shelf. It was quite heavy. I have a lot of books. I think my ficus are some of my favorite in my collection. I really love showing them off. There's something about they're really big, really big. <laughs> Without editing, you guys will see how tongue-tied I get on a regular basis. Um, but I really love their big, beautiful leaves. I have several like ficus elasticas, my fiddle leaf fig, etc., and they are just gorgeous. these shelves definitely needed a good dust. I have a lot of little knickknacks. One of the things that I collect is actually crystals and stones. I have always done that since I was a small child. I love how shiny they are and they're one of my favorite things to just kind of have around. I really enjoy them. So I have quite a few of them on my shelves with all of my books <laughs> and they don't get dusted around very often either honestly. And this shelf is kind of my to-be-read pile as far as my library goes. Not all of them, like the bottom shelves, are just uh, ones that I reach for a little less often. But the middle shelves mostly are books that I still need to read or are just kind of on my list to reread. So I try to keep them at a good level. That way I don't forget about them and they don't get buried in my collection. You can see me here just kind of shifting a few things around. Honestly, when I moved into this house, I just kind of popped things wherever they fit. So there wasn't a whole lot of forethought involved with some of the things that I have spread around. So as I go through uh, and trying to, you know, reorganize this room, I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional about where I'm placing things so that way I will actually get to enjoy them, I'll actually get to see them, and they'll actually be seen, uh, not stuck behind each other. This top shelf is still kind of a mystery to me. I would really 
kind of like to get a nice big grow light up there, but we'll see. And this over here is my uh, faux fireplace. Uh, it is very nice in the winter, it's very toasty. But this time of year, I really just like to have the little fireplace going. And it also is a really good spot for my plants. It's an east facing window, so they get a good amount of light there. It's one of the main windows in the household for my plants, so I try to make really good use of the space. Those candle holders you see over there, I grew up a Harry Potter nerd. I know that there is a lot of controversy around it. Um, however, there is a specific scene in those movies where there is like a big library and there's candles that are made in the shape of vertebrae. I really love them, have always loved them, and my boyfriend was kind enough to print out on his 3D printer a few of them for me. So I have little candle holders and I think they're so cool. And that little uh, teepee or kind of a diamond looking structure over there, that is actually a book tree. Uh, it was given to me by my boyfriend's parents and that's where I keep my next up to be read books. And now that I'm kind of putting the room back together, you can see me just popping things in and out to see if I like them. Unfortunately, some of the footage did go missing. Uh, there was a little bit of an error with the recording, sadly, <laughs> but you'll see the finished product at the end. I'm just kind of changing things around to see what I think and if I like, you know, the way that it's looking, if there's enough contrast. Even though all of my plants are obviously green, and I'm very happy about that, I still want there to be a little bit of visual contrast. That little guy there is actually my uh, ficus, my oh, natal fig. There we go, it's my natal fig, uh, and it is the variegated version. She's still quite small. I did purchase her quite small and I'm still waiting for her to grow um, even a little bit bigger, but she seems to be quite a slow grower for me, which I'm hoping with giving her some more light might pick up. We'll see. And I did decide to move my anthurium over here as well. Uh, it is going to be, I think, in the path of a little bit more of the humidity <laughs> in this room. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be too much light, though, so I will have to keep an eye on it. This shelf is one of my kind of display areas, so I do have little terrariums like that one. They do have some orchids in them. They don't get quite enough light to really do any growing, but I still like the way that they look. I would like to possibly work on repositioning them or moving them around someday soon, but that day is not today. I just wanted to pop these things back up here. It is getting a little bit late, so this is going to be a video across a couple of days. And that wet spot on my shirt uh, is actually from something that you'll see next. I did purchase a humidifier and the water got all over me, so. It was delivered a ball. All right, guys, so the part of the room that I think I'm most excited for is this right here. I've had this for maybe about a week and I just haven't uh, put it in yet because I wanted to share it with you guys, but it is a humidifier. And I'm really, really excited because this room, while you know the humidity is okay, most days it's probably 54, 55. I would like it to be a little bit higher, number one, because obviously I have a lot of aeroids, a lot of tropical plants that I think would probably appreciate a little boost of humidity. But also uh, because both thrips and spider mites actually thrive in dry environments. So as a part of my 
pest repelling, pest preventing routine, I actually would like to keep this humidity or the humidity in this room a little bit higher. So I have invested in a large humidifier and I'm gonna go ahead and set it up with you guys now. After I get scissors. <laughs> As always, uh, these guys are very interested in what I am doing. So you guys are just gonna have to deal with seeing their furry faces a lot in this video, I think. <laughs> I'm getting a ball thrown at me from behind by the corgi. which is kind of cool. It is just a little remote, it looks like. I'll have to read the instructions to kind of get an idea of what all this thing will do. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this opened up. Okay, so this looks fairly simple. This top part here actually comes off, uh, which I was not expecting. I was kind of hoping, I mean, I guess I could carry this with me. <laughs> to go fill it up with water, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I personally deal with a lot of chronic pain, so I try to avoid carrying uh, heavy things <laughs> when I can, but there is a little handle here, so let's see how this goes. All right, here we go. So this thing is all full. Uh, I wanted to see how long it would run with a completely full tank, which is why I did fill it all the way up. Uh, it is definitely heavy though, so good thing to keep in mind there. Okay, this has one of those little pull to activate battery type tabs. So I want to keep it, I think, about 60%. Not sure whether or not the light button does anything. Oh, okay, so that's low, medium, high. Just pushing this button. I think I'm going to start it on, I mean, well, I think I'll start it at low just to kind of see what it does. I don't know whether that's doing anything. Let me turn off the grow lights real quick. Okay, so it looks like the light is actually, there we go, down here in the tank. So I guess that lets you see how full it is, maybe. Um, then the timer, They did say to set after. You set the humidity. I guess I'll just kind of let it run. Oh, okay, so that I guess puts it to sleep or like puts the sleep mode on. That I'm fine with. And it is about matching up with my uh, hygrometer over there. <laughs> I have a hygrometer behind me. So that's good. That means that you know they're both fairly accurate, uh, and hopefully this will give me a good reading, especially when you know it's programmed to stop at sixty percent, and that's the humidity that I'm shooting for. So I'm gonna let that run while I keep going about my cleaning. So this is cleaning day two. I got a little bit tired out after all of my full day yesterday cleaning. So I wanted to go ahead and just finish up today in better lighting definitely as well. I'm just taking around my big vacuum and vacuuming around all the edges and behind and underneath all the furniture that the robot vacuum does not usually get to. And you're kind of getting a little bit of a sneak peek here at what uh, the space is going to look like in the end. But I just wanted to make sure that it was really nice and clean. That way it could be ready for spring. 
Uh, I don't necessarily believe in spring cleaning, but it is for sure a good time of year to just kind of turn over a new leaf, start fresh, and that's what I wanted to do with this video. I wanted to start a beautiful new plant room for the spring. As you can see here, the humidifier is still growing and I'm so excited about it. Uh, th at this point, I think it's been about two days and it's still going strong. So definitely a, a nice big tank will keep it full for a little while. And we're almost done. Just a couple more shelves there. And good to go. of what, some of my most exciting plant updates for February since this video is going to be going up on March 1st and I'm planning on putting up a spring plant room tour right after this but I figured I would give you guys a little sneak peek. So one of the most exciting things this month is this Hoya Obovada Viragata Splash has put out a couple of new leaves which I am so excited about. She's now a six leaf queen <laughs> uh, and I think she just looks adorable. I love those beautiful new leaves she has. Obviously my uh, Hoya Pubicalix is up on a trellis and she is looking gorgeous. I really love her new leaves that she has coming out and I hope she loves her trellis and helps her grow really really beautiful. I also wanted to show you guys this newest leaf on my Mexicanum. I am absolutely speechless. Uh, it has the dog ears kind of look that Mexicanums are known for so we are really getting into those mature beautiful leaves and I am so happy to see it. Also, my Anthurium crystallinum is putting out a new leaf, as you can see right here. She is gorgeous. Uh, I don't know how large she will be. I'm hoping that she'll be comparable in size to her sister over here, but we will see. Uh, I will keep you guys updated, and if you follow my Instagram, you'll definitely see some photos there. I also wanted to share with you guys this one last one. This is my Ring of Fire, my Philodendron Ring of Fire. And I've had her for a few months and she has not yet put out any new leaves for me. And I've been waiting rather impatiently for her to do so. And last week, that caterpillar finally popped. She is working on a new leaf. It should be unfurling here soon and I am so excited. I will definitely be posting pictures of this one as well. So you guys will have to stay up to date on this gorgeous, beautiful girl. I love those variegated leaves. All right, guys, and that is it. This is my spring plant room, and I am so, so happy to have it looking beautiful again. I just think that moving your plants around and giving them the opportunity to be in different places really draws your eye back to them, you know? You don't kind of let them blend into the background. You just get to see their beauty again, and it is one of my favorite things to do. So I am loving this new setup. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I tried to put some more interesting plants back over here for you guys as well. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what are some of your favorite plants that were not getting the attention they needed because they were hidden behind some of your other plants. Because I am definitely guilty of that. There are a few. And I hope to show you guys all of my new beautiful plants in my next video. So go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.